We're back in our matching sweaters. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> He's naked. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you would, put your name and where you're from in the comment section <clears throat> so we can welcome you to today's special episode of Loving Yourself. And in an effort to be a good um, example, I decided that I was coming on no makeup, just have my nightly skincare going on with my vitamin C serum because my face is so dry. I don't know if you've been, if you've been following it all, I've been super sick for the past, since last Friday. Um, but I have my voice back today, which is awesome because I've been sounding like a frog that swallowed a man. In that order, mm -hmm. like a frog swallowed a man. That's what I sounded like. It was really impressive actually. I should, you know, it's impressive. <laughs> Wendy, thank you, it made me feel good. Love you guys. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna get started pretty quick um, because I have read that, especially with millennials, I can lose audiences pretty fast if I don't get to the point. Don't even need makeup. You're wonderful. And that's true. I believe that in my heart. But at the same time, makeup sure makes us feel good sometimes. <laughs> um, my mom brought me sweet tea today. I haven't had real food in a lot of days. I'm just eating soup and fruits and vegetables and lots of emergency. So I really wanted some <laughs> real food. Oh, and uh, Christopher's sweet sister brought me food and my mom's brought me food. So I've been grateful for those people who have been bringing me food because cooking is the last thing on your list when you are sick. And then when you get hot and the cold, you know, my mom today sent me a thing. I was like, I think you have flu A. And I was like, <laughs> I don't get the flu. So this is a sinus infection. <laughs> I really do think it's a sinus infection. Um, I really do. So anyway, without further ado, um, at any point, if you will, if you love something, feel free to hit these little fun emoji thingies that I can see them right here. I think that's where they are on yours. If you have some great, um, sorry, foggy brain. If you have a great like thought and you're like, oh my gosh, that totally makes sense. Stick a light bulb. We love just to celebrate light bulb moments. So stick a light bulb in there and um, we'll be so glad you did. Who's ready? Okay, stick a heart in the comments right now if loving yourself is hard at times. Stick a heart in the comments. Let me see if it lets me stick a heart in the comments. <laughs> I would stick a heart in the comments right now. Sometimes loving ourselves is just hard, right? Amen, Cassidy. Amen. Amen, Christopher. Loving you is easy, though, but, you know, that's because I love you. <laughs> um, okay. So, today, we are going to talk about loving yourself. And I thought that Valentine's Day was the day after Valentine's Day. But everybody's saying happy Valentine's Day today. So does Leslie Nope celebrate it on the 13th? I thought she celebrated on the 15th. Somebody please clarify in the comments. Does Leslie Nope celebrate Valentine's Day on the 13th or the 15th? Maybe I'm thinking Rebecca celebrates it on the 15th. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Um, anyway, so what a great thing to have on everybody's calling it Valentine's Day today. So I really thought Leslie Nope celebrated on the 15th. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about loving yourself. And the first phrase that I have to say is super cheesy and it's so true. Loving yourself can be tough. It, it, that's just true. Loving yourself can be tough. And sometimes learning to love yourself for the first time is the real issue. This is something that I don't think people realize. Um... If you never loved yourself to begin with, 
then you can't just all of a sudden start loving yourself one day. Does that make sense? Like some people, some people are um, so far along in their lives and they've never loved themselves yet. Are you with me? Does that make sense? So sometimes learning to love yourself for the first time is the issue because you've never loved yourself. Or maybe something has changed in your life and learning to love your new self is hard. Y'all, I get that. I get life change. If you're new here, um, I was married, my husband was killed, and now I have a new life, and now I'm engaged. And I never thought my life would be like this, you know? We have, and I have so many friends that are going through infertility right now, or have lost babies, or have lost parents. Um, Loss is so hard. So maybe something has changed in your life and you're having a hard time loving your new self. Maybe you've gained weight or lost weight and you're struggling with that. That's your new self. I'm so sorry. I've been really sick. So I apologize for any strange sounds that come out of me. I'm really sorry. (coughs) In a world where perfect body image, lavish vacations, and tons of money seem to be king, It's hard to feel okay with the seemingly normal and ordinary mundane lives that we live, right? So I'm going to say that again. We see like on Instagram, right? Especially Instagram. I I don't notice this much as, as much on Facebook, but in Instagram, I see this, right? In a world where perfect body image, lavish vacations, tons of money, all that is king. It is so hard to live these mundane lives. Cassidy, I'm so glad you had a light bulb moment. That makes me so happy. Um, And y'all, I say this all the time, but I just don't think I can say it enough. What you see in those little squares on Instagram are the highlight reels of people's lives, okay? They're the highlight reels. They're the best moments. You don't see the hard times, the hours, you know, they had to put in or the time they had to spend away from their family or the tears they shed or um, or the fact that they're using filters and the pictures aren't even that real. Can we talk about that? Okay. Um, so just know that, that it can be very tempting to compare yourselves. That's the big thing. It's very tempting, I'm so sorry, to compare yourself to... Um, everything you see on social media. And y'all, generations have had different struggles depending on their generation, right? You know, we were not raised during like the Great Depression. We were raised during a recession, but not during the Great Depression, right? That was a struggle of one generation, okay? A a struggle of our generation and of the generation below me um, is, especially, I missed it by a few years, thankfully, but the, str- the struggle of the generation below me um, is, is social media, and that is something that a lot of, maybe your parents don't understand, or, or older people don't understand, but the comparison that happens via social media is so sad and sickening at times because what you see on social media isn't always real, so I just want to encourage you and remind you of that. Comparing me to me only. Get it, Wendy. Good job. Okay, so one thing I wanted to tell you, a word that they use in the entrepreneurial world is imposter syndrome. And I was going to look up the real definition for this, but I'm just going to explain it to you, okay? So if you want to look into this later, you can. It's imposter syndrome. This is when I wish I could say things in the words just like, popped up on the screen. Imposter syndrome. I don't know how to do that. (laughs) Um, But anyway, so what imposter syndrome is in the entrepreneurial world is when you as a business owner um, compare your business and your success to other businesses and their success. It's the same thing that happens with moms, with people in their careers, um, People do this with their marriages, with their relationships. You know, I'm just going to call it imposter syndrome, okay? And so I think it applies to every discipline. You can do it with your job. It's not just entrepreneurs, but in the entrepreneurial world, we talk about it a lot. We talk about imposter syndrome. So I'm going to specifically explain it from my perspective as an entrepreneur right now and just put yourself in it, okay? Okay. 
So what the, what it means, imposter syndrome, is you feel like a fraud. You often think, how, how could I do this? Like, I can't do this. I'm not qualified. Like, how could I do this? How can I run my own business? Like, what if no one likes my ideas? What if no one buys my products? Like, how, how can I do this? Um, like I said, I think it also applies to so many other careers and life responsibilities. So how can I be a mom? How can I be sent home with this little baby and be expected to know how to care for it? Like, I don't know what to do with this kid. Or maybe you're a teacher and you think they're going to just leave me alone with these 28 little souls to care for and then I have to teach them and then I have to give them tests. Like, what? How in the world am I going to do that? Or maybe you're in the medical field and you think, I don't have a right to be here. Like, people's lives are in my hands. Like, I'm, I'm still a kid. How, how do I have a right to do this? You know, we all at times go through, can go through, I'm not saying you have to, but we all at times can go through this imposter syndrome, okay? Um, and I'm going to read Wendy's comment right now. She said, OMG, imposter syndrome was so real in college. Not feeling like you deserve to be a part of the private school life. Learning to be that, believe that you do is tough. They talk about it so much in undergrad. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad they talked about it. Uh, she went to Emory and she's in the medical field. So that is a part of her life. Um, so I think many of us deal with the imposter syndrome. And I want you to know. I promise what we're doing right now is we're breaking down loving ourselves, okay? I have to break it down um, in order to get, we have to get to the root. We really got to dig in and dive deep to get to the root of ourselves to figure out what is keeping us from loving ourselves fully, okay? So we got to dig in and then at the end, I'm going to do like the, you know, Five steps to loving yourself. We're going to do that at the end. But we got to really get in there. So that's why we're pulling these things apart right now. And it's leading us to understand maybe what the obstacles are in preventing us from loving ourselves. Does that make sense? Can you guys give me some thumbs up or hearts? Or if you're, if you're tracking with me right now, that'd be great. Okay, so if you saw my post and my um, stories, and if you don't follow my Instagram stories, um, I put in, like, sometimes I'll put in polls or different, um, like, questions that you can answer for these Instagram lives so I can know more content that you guys want to hear. So check out my Instagram stories um, if you don't already, please. And you can see random things about my life if you want, but you can scroll past those if you don't want to watch. But I do put questions about Instagram Live. So like I said, it's so tough sometimes getting past the negative voices in our head. And that's something that somebody talked about. Part of why they can't love themselves is because of the negative voices in their head for one reason or the other. And that's something I think almost everybody struggles with at some point in their life. So it can be tough getting past those negative voices. <coughs> in our head telling us that we aren't smart enough or brave enough or old enough or good enough or pretty enough. And in case you haven't heard it today, I just want to tell you that you are enough. So to those ugly voices in your head say, I am enough, dang it. (laughs) And if you're just tuning in, I'm really sorry. I have a cold, so um, I may sound a little funny. So And remember that you are enough because you are you. And as my friend Dr. Seuss says, there is no one youer than you. And y'all, that is something to be stinking proud of. It it is awesome. There is no one youer than you, and you can be proud of that. So if you got up today and all you did was be you, then that was enough. Because sometimes that's all we can do. So what if instead of comparison, we simply chose to be happy and content with ourselves? How would our world, how would our personal world and how would the greater world be different if we woke up each day and chose to be content with who we are individually and we did not compare ourselves to unrealistic expectations or to the person next to us? How would our world be different? I want you to think about that. And the big question I want to ask you is, what if being ourselves 
was enough all along? If you're writing things down, write that one down. What if being ourselves was enough all along? Because y'all, I think it is. I think that's one of the answers to this. So how would our lives be different if we learn to love ourselves? This is the one that I get all teary about, okay? This is my favorite thing to talk about right here. How would our lives be different if we learned to love ourselves as much as the one who is obsessed with us loves us? There's a reason Tucker's in this. So how would our lives be different if we learned to love ourselves as much as the one who is obsessed with us loves us? Maybe the person who's obsessed with you is your kid or your parents or your dog or your spouse. You know, there was a commercial a year or two ago during the Olympics that I still get teary-eyed thinking about. And it talked about what if we believed in ourselves as much as our moms believed in us. And now here's the thing. (laughs) I put, and now I'm crying, but really, because I knew this was going to happen. I put it in my notes. Um, And let me say this. Maybe you had a crummy mom. And if you know me and you have a crummy mom, I always try to make up for your crummy mom (laughs) because I have a great mom and I believe the power of like mothering is a great gift. It's a great gift. So if these words don't resonate with you because you had a crummy mom, I'll say it in a different way in a minute, okay? Let's pretend you have a great mom. What if we believed in ourselves as much as our moms believed in us? Think about that mom who's cheering like crazy for her kid at the game or that mom who just loved her kids so much she did what middle school kids would think was embarrassing and come visit them at lunch and bring them cookies and all that stuff. What if you loved your mom? What if you loved yourself? Sorry. What if you loved yourself and um, cheered for yourself as much as your mom did? Or as much as that person who loves you. A lot of you all have cats and dogs and bunnies and other animals. What if you loved yourself as much as your pet loved you? Do you love yourself as much as your pet loves you? Because I hope you do. And if you had a crazy, a crummy mom, then I want to say, what if you see yourself the way that your kids see you or the way that your dog sees you? Okay, what if you could see yourself the way that your dog sees you or that awesome student that you love sees you? What then? How would your life be radically different if you could see yourself in the way that the person who loves you most sees you? How would your life be radically different? Would it be different? Put yes or no in the comments. Would your life be different if you loved yourself the way that the person who loves you most loves you? Okay, my next question for you is, what could you achieve? How much of yourself could you accept If you only saw yourself through loving eyes, if you only see yourself through loving eyes, how much of yourself could you accept and love? Yes. Yes, Leanna. Yes. Yes. Um, What could you achieve? And I'm just going to kind of pause for that and Life is not always about what we achieve and, um, you know, how far we go in careers and all that stuff. But I mean, achieve and like just being happy, you know, how much could you achieve if you learned to accept yourself through loving eyes? And sometimes... Here, we're going to switch. We're going to the next thing, right? So we're talking about, there we're talking about these these loving moms, loving parents, loving people, right? We're talking about if we loved ourselves so much like these loving people in our lives loved us, or if we loved ourselves like our dogs loved us, right? So we're talking about having these healthy, loving relationships, you know, that's that. Now we're going to switch gears. Sometimes... 
we don't have those healthy relationships, right? Sometimes we have those hurtful relationships. We have those experiences that traumatize us and that affect us today. Sometimes we are or begin to become what people say about us. And that was one of the things that somebody mentioned as well. And I had already had it written down, so I was glad that they said it because I agree. Sometimes we can become what people say about us or what people said about us 20 years ago. We become that over time. And then eventually we let those ugly words win. So as I often mention, our past, our childhood can greatly affect who we are now. Maybe you were bullied by siblings or family members or people at school. And the list can go on. People at church, maybe you were bullied. If you were told that you were bad or you were a mistake or you were ugly or you were fat when you were young, you might struggle with that still now. You probably do still struggle with that now. And you often begin to believe that about yourself. So if you're told these things over and over and over again in childhood, then you begin to believe them about yourself, even if they don't matter and they're not true, right? Because why does somebody get to say that? But we're going to get to that point. We're going to get to that point. So Christopher and I watch um, Once Upon a Time. So if you don't know, my fiance lives in Florida. I live in Tennessee. And so we watch a show together on FaceTime. So it's like we're watching it together. It's wonderful. So Once Upon a Time, I wasn't all about it, but it's an ABC show. And um, essentially they remake fairy tales. It sounds crazy, but it's awesome. I promise. It's awesome. So... Highly recommend. Anyway, so here's here's the example. So we're watching Once Upon a Time last night. And um, just so you know, we're only in the third season. So we're watching on Netflix. So no spoilers here. So a character, Zelina, she's a wicked witch, okay? She's like the Wicked Witch of the West from Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. And Zelina was told by her father growing up that she was wicked. He just called her wicked all the time. He was like, no, you're wicked. And she eventually begins to believe that about herself. And so as I'm watching this, all I could think was about you all and about um, <clears throat> our talk today. And I thought, this is it. This is it personified. This is what happens. And so Zelina's in her little hut because remember, it's make-believe. And um, her dad's telling her that she's wicked. And she eventually begins to believe that about herself. Well, here's the thing about when we begin to believe these ugly things that people say about us. Then not only do we begin to believe them, we begin to, be, to live them out, okay? So she was told she was wicked over and over again. So she then not only begins to believe it, she begins to live it out. She's letting someone else dictate her destiny, okay? And this quote stuck out to me. This quote was said in the show. Only you shape your destiny. And if you believe you are evil, then that is what you'll become. I'm going to say it again. Only, so ladies and gents, if you struggle with ugly words that people have said about you in the past or that a coworker said about you today or that a mother-in-law said about you two months ago, if you are struggling with that, remember that only you can shape your destiny. And if you believe you are what those people said about you, then that is what you will become. So, I'm going to put it in my words now. Only you shape your destiny. What you believe about yourself, that is who you will become. And y'all, dang it, you're going to become awesome because if you can't believe in yourself, we're going to believe in in you enough for you until you can become awesome and believe in yourself too. (laughs) Okay? Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Megan. So what we say to and about ourself matters. What you say to yourself and what you say about yourself matters. What you say when you look into the mirror matters. Ladies and gents, what you say, what you think secretly when you look into the mirror, that matters. The self-deprecating jokes that you make, that matters. That chips away at believing in yourself. The secret thoughts that you have about our bodies and our brains and our abilities, they all matter. 
Because if we don't believe in ourselves, then how can we ever hope to be the versions of ourselves that we want to be? If we don't believe in ourselves, who's going to believe in us? Well, some people will, right? But um, just because somebody else believes in us doesn't mean that magically makes us believe in ourselves. Remember, we have to control our own destiny and we have to believe in ourselves. And the biggest part of that is, y'all, we cannot love others well if we don't love ourselves. This is a big one that has gotten several of my followers before. They said, oh my gosh, if I don't love myself, you know, I'm not able to love my kids or my spouse or my friends well. And what am I teaching my kids? <laughs> like, we have to love ourselves in order to love others well, okay? So if you can't do it for yourself right now, because I hope eventually you will be able to, if you can't do it for yourself right now, do it for the other people you love. Choose to love yourself so you can love others well. So in summary, <clears throat> these are the things and the reasons that we are held back from loving ourselves or being our best selves, okay? This is the stuff, the stuff that we just talked about, this is the stuff you have to dig into. You have to realize, has someone said something to me in my past? Um, am I, what am I letting hold me back? Is it because someone told me I wasn't good? Um, is it because, so held back from loving ourselves or being our best selves because someone else told us that we aren't good or we messed up or we didn't feel pretty enough or good enough or rich enough or religious enough. And when we do this, we are letting others' opinions or the past dictate our lives. And that is keeping us from being our best. So y'all, if someone has told, like said horrible things about you, I'm sorry. And the hardest part, one of the hardest things I've learned is people who wrong you don't always apologize. And that is hard. Sometimes they never get a chance to apologize or sometimes they're just never going to own up to it and apologize. It is hard when the people who wrong us don't apologize. Sometimes the apologies don't come. But I just want to tell you that these reasons that we're held back because someone else told us we aren't good enough, because we messed up, because we don't feel pretty enough or good enough, religious enough, rich enough, we can't, we have to stop letting these things dictate our lives now. We have to choose to be our best self now. That's the big thing I want us to hear is that this is a choice and we are choosing to be our best self and to live our best life that we can live. And we want to live, I want you to live the life that you love. You really can create a life that you love. That doesn't mean that you're going to make six figures or that you're going to live in a mansion, but you can love your life. You can love yourself. You can love your 2000 Camry. Okay. <laughs> you know, we don't have to be rich to be happy. We don't have to be skinny supermodels to be happy, but if that's what you want to be, then by all means. Um, but you can choose to forgive, and you can choose to seek therapy, and you can choose to tell the voices inside you that they no longer have power over you because you are enough. You can choose all of that. Because... We no longer want to let others dictate our lives, right? And that's something I want to ask you right now. Who are you letting dictate your life? Who are you letting dictate your life? And is it worth it? In the end, is it worth it? Whoever you're letting dictate your life, is that how you want it to be? And if it's not, then I encourage you to make the change. Here's why. Here's why we don't want to let those butt heads win. <laughs> because whether we want to or not, when we are constantly remembering the mean words that the bullies and the jack butts, that's what I wrote, and the jack butts said to us, then you are letting them win. Okay? When we are constantly remembering that and playing that tape in our head, we're letting the butt heads win. When we let society or the beauty industry define if we are pretty enough, we are letting them win. People, we 
we don't even know. We don't know who runs. I mean, I don't know who runs the beauty industry. Maybe you know them personally, but people we don't even know. We're letting them win. (coughs) We're letting them dictate. I literally just got my voice back today, so might be using it a lot. Amen, Wendy. Amen. And when we don't feel good enough or pretty enough, we pass that on to our children and to our friends' children and to our nieces and nephews. And I know that you love your own kids. You love your nieces and nephews. You love your adopted nieces and nephews. And if you can't do it for you, do it for them. This is not to make you feel shame. Please do not. I'm not trying to shame you into making a choice, okay? Because the world does that enough. I just want to remind you that you are good and you are enough and you are worthy. No matter who you are or where you are today, you are good and you are enough and you are worthy. Sometimes we doubt ourselves. It happens. But remember to get back up. And no one gets to define us but ourselves. I want you to remember that. That nobody gets to define us but you. Is that not awesome? Like people can say whatever they want to say. But who cares? We define who we are. Our actions define who we are. Right? What we choose defines who we are. And if you have done something in the past that you feel horrible about, that's okay. There is a new day. It is a new day. You can have a new beginning any day. That's okay too. Make better choices. You can do it. And we're going to all mess up. That's okay too. It's okay to mess up. But y'all, we just have to remember that when we doubt ourselves, we just have to get back up. We just have to get back up. And I think it's really important that we don't let others define us. And a big, big thing is don't be your own worst enemy and don't hold yourself down. I think of it, I think, you know, I'm sure there's been tons of shows and cartoons about this, but how many times are we our own worst enemy? And, you know, it looks like there's this really big bad guy and in the end it's just them. It's just that person. (laughs) Their own insecurities are what's been holding them back the whole time. Don't hold yourself back. Be you. Let Let yourself be you. And if someone else is holding you down, leave them. You don't need that negativity in your life. And if leaving them's a little much, then at least talk to them. Tell them that they are holding you back And discuss how you can prevent that. And if they don't change, then do what's best for you. Remember that leaving unhealthy relationships is a good thing. What can you do to love yourself? Okay, I'm going to pause because I think there might be, there's a little bit of a lag. So I'm going to pause just for a second. And get a drink, okay? (coughs) Do you all have any questions so far? Any questions or thoughts about anything that we've said or that I've said so far? Feel free to stick them in the comments if you have any questions or thoughts. Because we are getting on to the how to of loving yourself. That's where we're getting on to right now. But like I said, what we went over just now, I think is so important because, you know, we all have wounds, okay? And our wounds and our experiences, those are going to shape us and those are going to affect us, but they do not have to define us. Okay, our wounds can will shape us and affect us, but they do not have to define us. So if you are living in the past, in past hurt because you messed up or you didn't think you did something good enough or somebody said something to you and they shouldn't have or somebody did something to you and they shouldn't have, 
Y'all, you can still move forward from that. You can still be your best self. You can still get help. If that means therapy, that means therapy. If that means forgiving yourself, forgive yourself because you're worthy of forgiveness. Everyone is worthy of forgiveness, even if it's hard to give. Again, this is when I want you to think about what if you loved yourself? What if you forgave yourself as much as the person who loves you most? What if you loved yourself and forgave yourself like your dog does? (laughs) Right? Dogs are forgiving creatures. They get in trouble for eating your crackers, and then an hour later, they want to cuddle you. Tucker knows. (laughs) So here we go. Let's do the what can you do to love yourself, a how-to. I want you to determine what or who is keeping you from loving yourself. If you are struggling with loving yourself, I need you to determine what or who is keeping you from loving yourself. The what could be an experience in the past, like we're talking about, Or who? Is it a person? Is a person keeping you from being able to fully love yourself? Sorry. Another way to learn to love yourself is, and not right now, (laughs) but when you're alone, um, sit quietly and meditate. Journal about the things that hurt you in the past. You might need to dig into that. Write out the pain and decide what you will do to stop allowing the pain to rule over you. Again, decide what you will do to stop the pain from ruling over you. Because remember, you have the power here, not the person who hurt you. You have the power. They don't have the power over you anymore. If you're still in that relationship with the person who's hurting you, Reach out to someone, get help, and get out. Get out from under that relationship. We have to do the inner work in order to truly heal. I believe that inner work is so important. So you have to do that inner work in order to truly heal. And true healing happens, and it's real, and it can lead to so much self-love and self-acceptance. And it's beautiful. And that's part of why journaling and finding the root of the problem is so important. That's why we talked about that at the beginning of this video. We talked about the things that could be holding us back from loving ourselves. Because you know what stinks? You can't just like sit in a chair one day and be like, I'm going to love myself today. I don't know why I went 29 years without loving myself, but today, dang it, I'm going to love myself. Boom. Change. No, it can't, it can't happen like that. I'm sorry. Wish it could, but it can't. So there has to be some inner work that's done, but it is worth it. It is worth it. So dealing with past hurt is hard, but it is crucial in healing and moving forward. And again, you have to remind yourself that you're worth love and belonging. You're worth moving forward. So forgiving yourself for fast Forgiving yourself for past choices and mistakes. That's a really big thing too, okay? Forgive yourself for past choices and mistakes. Forgive yourself for shortcomings, okay? We all fall short. We all mess up. It happens. Forgive yourself for that too. A lot of this, y'all, a lot of what prevents us from loving ourselves is us standing in the way, just needing to forgive us, ourselves, Another thing you can do to love yourself is choose healthy relationships and leave toxic ones. Choose healthy relationships, leave toxic ones. Here's another one. Accept and love who you are right now. Okay, y'all, we've, we've talked about all these ways that you can improve your life and, you know, these things you can work on, but love yourself right now, who you are right now, warts and all, love yourself right now, even if it's not where you want to be. Start choosing to love yourself. And you might be like, but Megan, I don't even know what that looks like. Well, next time you look in the mirror and you say something ugly to yourself, be like, oh, I'm awesome.
awesome and I'm I'm you need to hear you're pretty you're smart you're good enough whatever you need to hear say that to yourself so if you're like I don't even know where to start start when you look in the mirror hi Katie start when you look in the mirror and say to yourself I'm awesome when you start to hear those negative voices in your head say positive reinforcement in place of it okay you got me writing in my brand new journal I got for Christmas. Thank you. Oh, yay, Wendy. I'm so glad. Aw, thank you, Katie. You're so sweet. Um, yeah. Yay, I'm glad you're writing your journal, Wendy. So accept and love who you are right now, even if it's not exactly where you want to be yet. It says, Your journal says love. It says learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. Also, remember to love others the way that you want to be loved. Another way to practice how you can best love yourself is loving others. Love others the way that you want to be loved and then see if they don't reciprocate that love back to you. It's amazing how people just mirror what um, mirror the attitude and the actions. So a lot of times if you're in a toxic relationship, you might mirror toxic to them. They might mirror it to you or you might be really loving to them and they might be toxic to you, you know. Just never know. And lastly, remember that you are worthy of love and belonging. And if you want a book to read about this, I highly recommend um, Brene Brown, um, The Gifts of Imperfection. She talks about why it's okay to be imperfect and the list goes on. Just go look up Brene Brown, B-R-E-N-E, and last name Brown like the color. Um, Go look her up in her books. They're awesome. But she's the one who talks about being worthy of love and belonging. Those are her words. I just want to say that. All the other words in here are mine. But worthy of love and belonging, that's a Brene Brene thing. So, y'all, that's what I want to say about loving yourself. I just want to encourage, encourage, encourage you. That's what this is all about. It's just encouraging you that you are enough. Sometimes we have to do that inner work and realize what's holding us back okay the inner work is worth it it is worth it i promise therapy is worth it if you need a therapist find a therapist it's worth it and remember that you are worthy of love and belonging and here's another thing i'm going to challenge you to do um i challenge you will you please share this on your facebook Okay, I'm going to post it to YouTube and post the link. You can just copy the YouTube link and post it to your Facebook. Or um, you can post anything in your Instagram. But if you'll post this video to your Facebook, I just feel that there are so many people, especially women, but all people that need to hear these words. And sometimes around Valentine's Day, people can get really down and they can feel really lonely. And I have just felt in my heart that I just want to encourage, like I want to reach out and hug every person who is feeling lonely right now or is feeling sad because they don't have a Valentine. And I know that sometimes sounds cheesy to some people, but y'all, this can be a really hard time for people. And I just think it's also important to say that We're not learning to love ourselves so that we can get a spouse, okay? That's not the goal here. We're learning to love ourselves because we're enough just as us, okay? And telling ourselves that if we're thinner or prettier or richer or whatever, we could just get a spouse. Like, no, that's not true. Like, you're awesome. You shouldn't have to change yourself to get any type of relationship or friendship or to get your mom to like you or to get your sister to like you. You shouldn't have to change who you are because who you are is awesome. And y'all, I really truly believe that there are people out there that are going to match your weird. Remember, we're all weird in awesome ways. I'm super weird. Um, I think this is awesome, not weird. I like these um, sparkly rose gold house shoes, okay? Some people might think that's weird. I think it's awesome. We all have our own quirks and quirks are awesome. Maybe you like video games or you like donuts. I don't know. There are other people like you that like the same things. And you know what's cool about friendship and about love? You don't have to like the same things. That's okay too. It's awesome. Like 
I'm going to say it again. Like you are you. And there's no one in this world that can be a better you than you. So I just want everybody to be themselves and to be happy about being themselves because you and all your quirks are awesome. They're really awesome. I promise. And as long as we're not hurting anybody with our quirks or our habits, then they're awesome. What, okay, how about this? How about you all tell me something you love in the comments? It can be anything. It can be sparkly house shoes or Chick-fil-A tea or your dog. Everybody tell me something they love in the comments right now. And you can put a few things if you can't decide on one. Tucker, you want to ask them what they love? Say, what do you love? See, I'm weird. I make my dog talk. <laughs> I think everybody does that. Lindsay said, my dog Nash. And your dog, sweet Tucker. <gasps> Tucker, they love you. Oh, goodness. Yay. Reading Consumer Reports. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. That's so cool. Well, now if I need a Consumer Report, I'm going to ask you about it. Jane Austen and black and white movies. Oh, that's so neat. We watched those in high school. I, uh, our theater teacher had us watch those. These are so cool, guys. You guys are so cool and so unique. I enjoy reading about crime and investigation. Yes. I like watching shows, but not scary shows. Gilmore Girls. <gasps> yeah. Tucker, have you seen Gilmore Girls? You've seen a few. Tucker's seen a few Gilmore Girls. Tucker, you're not paying attention. Watch, watch the, watch the phone. What are you doing, crazy? Okay. Hmm. Five-year-olds, right? <laughs> Y'all, we are all, there was a little bit of my weird right there. There was a little bit of my weird. Tucker's my weird. Um, I think we're all awesome. And do you see all these things? Reading Consumer Reports, Jane Austen, Black and White Movies, Dogs, Gilmore Girls, cr Reading Crime Investigation. Um, Tucker is going to be in the wedding. Yes, in a very unique way. He will be. Y'all, we're all awesome and unique. And I hope that, I hope that you accept that about yourself. And I hope that you love that. And the people who are watching this right now, I hope you accept and love that. The people who are going to watch this tomorrow and they're going to watch this on YouTube, I hope that you love and accept that. And y'all, I'm going to say it again. If you would share this on your Facebook or send it to a friend that you think needs some love and encouragement, please do it. Um, right after I end this live, <clears throat> I'm going to take it straight to YouTube and upload it. And um, so you'll have an easy little URL to copy paste and send it over to a friend or to post it on your YouTube and uh, you can just tag Stressless Weddings. It'd be great. But y'all, I just want to encourage people. I hope that you felt encouraged today. I hope you know that you are so worthy of love and belonging. I hope Valentine's Day tomorrow for you is not a sad day. I hope it's a day that you celebrate loving yourself. And if you have a partner, I hope you celebrate loving them. But if you don't have a partner, love yourself tomorrow. Whatever that means, love yourself well. Hmm, I named my ovarian cyst before my surgery order to cope with it. Its name was Neville. That's how weird I am. I love that. Wendy, that's good. Actually, a lot of studies tell us to name things. That's, that's really cool. That's awesome. That's funny. Um, y'all, remember that life can be hard, but your past does not have to define you. You get to choose who you want to be. And loving yourself is a very, very important thing that I hope that you do and you continue to learn and that you pass on to younger generations how to love yourself. Remember that only you shape your destiny, and what you believe about yourself, that's what you will become. So you should believe that, <laughs> I use the word should, I don't like should, but you can believe that you are pretty much Beyonce and you are awesome and you shall become it. <laughs> Obviously, I'm kind of kidding, but y'all, if you believe you are good or you are bad, that is who you become. And I think you're all good and awesome and enough. 
and I hope that you choose to dictate your own life and not let the past or someone else dictate your life and your choices. Tucker and I love you all, and we just want to say happy Galentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you'll share this video with your friends if you think it can help anybody. And as always, I hope that you love yourself because we can't love others if we don't love ourselves and the world needs a whole lot more love. Bye, y'all. Say bye. Say bye. Bye.